year 10 you've made it to, which guys just don't do. So, you know, what does that personally mean to you? And, uh, you know, how long do you think you can go? Yeah, uh, I think it's technically my 11th season. Um, but uh, in this game, you just go one year at a time, one week at a time. Uh, you don't really think about, you know, how long you want to play. Um, just kind of live in the moment. Hey, Andrew. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Kevin Stefanski, Joe Woods, your history with them and, and what it's like seeing them in their new roles here in Cleveland and uh, just your thoughts on, on reuniting with them and, and how you see them lead in this team. Yeah, so obviously uh, I've known those guys for a while. Uh, coach Woods was my DBs coach in Minnesota for a couple of years. Um, you know, I've watched the fancy coach almost every position on offense when I was in Minnesota. Um, so it's been, um, you know, it's good to reunite with some coaches that, um, you know, uh, what they're about, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and so it was, it was exciting for me to come back, join with those guys and, um, you know, come here to Cleveland and, and uh, you know, win. Thanks for the next Scott Patrick. Hey, Andrew. The other day when we were talking to Olivier Vernon, um, he mentioned he thought last year's team struggled with maturity and discipline and then mentioned you as one of the guys brought in this offseason and he thinks that'll have an impact. So how do you kind of approach that role of leadership veteran and how do you ho hope that translates to the rest of the guys? Yeah, I think uh, anytime you're – you know, older vet on the team, it's kind of your responsibility to show the young guys, um, you know, how to approach the game, how to prepare, uh, you know, try to pass down any knowledge that you can and, you know, try to be a, a leader by example. Um, you know, like I said earlier, it's my 11th year, so um, kind of a young room. So, you know, you kind of just naturally take that on. And I've been lucky to be around guys when I was younger that showed me the way how to do things right. Um, so really just emulating those guys and, um, you know, trying to be the best teammate, best leader that I can for us on the back end. And, you know, hopefully it's uh, contagious to the other older guys. Is there one guy from when you were young that jumps out at you? Is having that role for you? Uh, I mean, there's a lot. Um, I know when I first got to Minnesota, Antoine Winfield, um, you know, uh, leading our secondary, really our team, uh, Chad Greenway, Terrence Newman, a lot of older guys that were, you know, not huge rah-rah uh, speech guys, but they really led by example. Um, so I'm fortunate those guys were around me when I was young and they kind of showed me what it was like to, to be an older vet in the room. Daryl Ryder, your line is open. Hey, Andrew, uh, the Browns drafted Grant Delpit in the, in the second round. What have you seen from him? What do you like about his game? Uh, he's, he's learning things quick. Uh, he's doing well for a rookie. Um, and, uh, you know, excited, excited to have him here. Uh, and, you know, like I said earlier, like trying to show the young guys, um, trying to teach them as much as you can, show them how to approach this game. Uh, so we're excited about what he can do. How difficult is it for a rookie, considering everything that happened this year and not having the on the field, off the se off season program, you had to do everything virtually. Um, as a veteran who's been in the league, you know, how tough is it to, to come in as a rookie and try and hit the ground running when, uh, you know, you don't have that time on the field? Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, so kudos to all those guys that are um, picking up things very quickly. Um, put in a tough situation as a rookie, not having that whole off season, with, you know, being hands on with a lot of things. Uh, but I think we did a great job with the virtual off season uh, and trying to make the most of it. Um, so that way, when we got here, uh, it wasn't like we were starting from zero. Dan Lobby, you're next. Hey, Andrew, we've, we've seen a couple um, 
like spring NFL leagues or spring pro leagues kind of start and stop recently. And, you know, you're a guy that came through, came up kind of in an alternate league in the UFL. Um, as a guy with that background, do you think the NFL could benefit from some of these spring leagues working out or, or some other kind of, I guess, farm system for lack of a better word? Yeah, I was very fortunate that that was around for me. Um, you know, otherwise I probably would have gone and played in Canada and, um, you know, you don't really know, you have no idea what, what would have happened after that. Um, I don't really know what the NFL stance is on it, but I know for any guy that was in my position, uh, you know, would love to have another avenue to go through if you don't get drafted or signed, something that you can at least have another chance to keep playing and potentially get picked up out of there. Um, so those are the guys I actually think about, guys that were in my position. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. We'll go to Tony Grossi. Andrew, it seems like one of the defensive trends in the NFL in the last couple of years or several years is a third safety. Used to be the sixth DB on the field. Now he's becoming the fifth often. And the Browns uh, toyed with that last year until some injuries hit. Um, can you, can you tell me uh, what are some of the benefits of getting a third safety on the field uh, earlier in, in a drive? Um, you know, it really depends on the game plan, who you're playing, their personnel, um, what type of safeties you have. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, you know, if, if you have enough guys that know the defense in all these different positions to be able to play that. Um, so if you can you can get that. It can be advantageous to you at times. Other times you might not want it. Is it a matter of just getting more speed on the field and coverage? Um, yeah, sometimes it can be. Um, can just be getting a different look. Um, you know, it's, like I said, it just depends on that week, the game plan, who you're playing, what type of plays they, they run, their personnel. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of variables to it. Thank you. These will be our last two questions. We'll go to Nate Ulrich and then to Scott Petrick. Nate. Hey, Andrew, being new uh, to the Browns, what do you want Browns fans to know about you and, and what they can expect you to bring to the team? What I would want y'all to know about me is um, that you're going to get my best every, every Sunday or Monday or Thursday, whenever we're playing. Uh, I leave it all out there on the field. Um, and that I'm here to win. That's it. And our last question is to Scott. Andrew, um, it looks like the news is better than maybe people thought about Kevin Johnson um, now that he's out of the hospital. But what kind of a shock is it when you see a guy go down with that kind of unusual injury and on the field? Um, how do you replace him in that nickelback role until he's back? Well, I think everyone knows in this league that it's, you know, next man up. And that's why if you're um, a backup, you just always have to be ready because injuries happen all the time in this league. Um, it's nothing new. Uh, you know, an injury like that is, yeah, it's unique, um, unfortunate. So we're, we're hoping that he, um, he heals up quick. And, uh, you know, other guys that will step in will have an opportunity now to showcase themselves. And just like anytime someone gets hurt to give someone else an opportunity, um, but it also shows that if you are a backup, you need to be ready to play.